getting a little gory, I'm hearing. Isn't that right? Well, it's, uh, it's about uh, something that's come up twice in production this year. Earlier this year, a coworker of mine working on Fringe comes up to me and says, Jen, uh, how do you recommend, like, I've got this shot where a soldier rips off his shirt and there's a worm swimming around his torso, and, and I, how do I displace the torso with the worm? I was like, oh, let's <laughs> bring out it's Bullet. It's a common question every day, huh? Bring out Bullet. And then, like, you know, flash forward to last month, and another friend of mine, he calls me up and says, Jen, I need a human head coming out of a male torso. What do you recommend? I recommend Bullet. So that's twice in a row this year, in like less than six months, where I've had coworkers coming up to me and say, I, I really need to displace a male human torso with something horrible. What do you recommend? And I recommend Bullet. So uh, what I'd like to show you on my screen right now is what the end result's going to be in true Julia Child fashion. And then I'm going to actually go to uh, how I, this was all set up. And again, this is all about doing really horrible displacements using bullet. Horrible as in horror. So first, let me load an example scene. Hey, Deuce. Wait a minute, we're talking horror? I gotta get in on horror. You rock, Deuce. I love horror. Where are we doing? Well, we're gonna do this horrible thing. Does it not look horrible? <laughs> well, no, this is kind of reminding me of something. This reminds me of uh, going back to uh, like Freddy Krueger uh, pushing his way through the bedroom wall what kind of was, a thing. What I think was exceptionally horrible about this horror was that this was being asked for, in both situations, for television shows. Oh. And this used to be films. And I don't know where the tele what the television industry thinks it's doing, but you got to go with the flow. So let's start with a human torso and a human head. That's going to be my collision object. That's the and that's the displacement. That's the object that's going to be displaced. Now, first thing is you set up your animation. The second tip that I've got here, and this is one instance where, for dynamics, this is true. When my experience with real flow, when I worked on Disney's World of Color, we actually simulated at ten times normal scale in order to get better detail. And that's what I've got here is that this head's actually you can't tell by looking at it, but. It's 10 times larger than a normal human head. I'm um, actually, yeah, I see your grid scale here. So you're, you find it blowing it up, making it larger, making it more of a maxature than a miniature. Can sometimes give dynamic systems a little a more breathing room. A little bit more, a little it bit of a help. It works for real flow, and sometimes it will work for bullet as well. So I'd like to give that tip to the audience. If you're working in real flow or if you're working in bullet, sometimes it helps to work at a slightly larger scale. Than, you can always shrink it down later. After you've got what you want, you can always shrink it down later. So if, if, you, if you suggest doing this, maybe you, you keep it to uh, easy to use math, five times larger, instead of something silly like 2.75, then I, exactly, make it easy. I, I completely yeah. agree there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull up bullet. I clicked on item properties to bring up bullet. I'm going to select two objects. There's only two objects in the scene. Add from layout selected. Ah, and I should also mention that this torso this torso object, it's a subpatch object, but for my re own reference, I've got the display subpatch level set to zero, which turns the subpatches off. Another thing is that I've got the subdivision order set to last because I want bullet to deform the cage, not the no. I want to be able to layer displacements on top. So it's better for me if I get an asset, a cache, that will deform the cage. So, and also, I'd also like you guys to notice how much detail is in this cage. There's a lot of, there's a lot of polygons here because it's pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah my friend uh, at the effects shop, he'd started with a low poly cage. And the thing is, a low poly cage is not going to give you that saran wrap effect because there's just no, not enough you, points. You need to have more points so that you can get the control that you want. I mean, we're moving instead of just one point, we're wanting to move 200, 300. Right. So well, let me make sure the display subtach level is set to zero. For, so a reverend's reference. So I'm going to add this, edit, add from layout selected. So this is using Bullet, Bullet Dynamics that's built into Lightwave 11. And if I were to scrub the scene now at the default, all it's going to do is boop, because they're both set to rigid right now. Just They're just so going to bump into each other. That's not what I want. I want one guy to displace the other. So I'm actually going to make both of them deforming objects. So I'm selecting them both, setting their type to deforming, because I've noticed that when it comes to collision objects against deforming meshes, I learned this tip from other folks. It sometimes helps if the collision object's in the same world 
if it is right. a, a deforming object that doesn't actually deform. So now they're both deforming objects. And I'm gonna so what you can do is you can tell one, def one de deforming object to just be harder than the other, yes? Yep. So, yes, yeah, so I'm going to tell, um, right now they're both soft. And I'm going to show you why you don't want them both to be soft. I, I, have, a, I have a feeling we're about to flatten someone's nose. Yeah, just give it a moment. And you'll see, yeah, Ooh. that's that's not what we want. It's 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 cool, but it's not what we want. And also, it looks painful. I I don't looks know. Like reconstruction uh, that kind of has its own charm in its own <laughs> in its own way, though. So I'm going to tell this guy, shape retention. I want it to retain its shape, 100%. Shape lock. I want it to lock translation and rotation. So, so we're telling. We're, we've told Bullet, the head, hold your shape completely and lock down our translation and our, and our rotation. So this is going to make that head, even though it's still a, it's a deforming type, it now should be considered hard. Yep. So now it's thinking about it, but the head is maintaining its shape. Except that uh, it doesn't look like the torso is maintaining its shape, does it? Looks more no, like I think uh, our torso is a little bit uh, zero gravity handkerchief there. A little soft, a little too soft. Yep. Again, it looks cool, but it's not what we want. I do like the speed of the calculation, though. Yeah, that's what's nice about Bull is that you can keep doing iterations. Very. My coworker, when he was working on Fringe, loved that because he was able to just test, 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 and and got what he wanted at the end of the day. He he loved that about Bullet a lot. So I'm going to make this a little bit uh, better. Let's tell the torso. Let's give, uh, let's give it a shape retention. Actually, better yet, I don't want it to think about the entire torso. I don't need it to think about this or down here. So what I've got in this scene, if you were to look at, if you were to look, I actually surfaced it with the weight map that I have applied to the stomach. So I've got a weight map, and the way I did that was in the T button for color channel. I just told it, take this weight map and reveal to the audience. That way we can see where you've painted a weight map. Because Bullet will go after all the non-zero uh, points mapped on this object. So let's go back to shaded solid. I'm going to tell it I want to only affect the points on that weight map. And that's, that's what I'm going to show here. So now the only thing you've changed is now you're adding You've added a weight map to only tell Bullet where you want it to pay attention. So it's working. It's locking it like a, like a frame. It's locking it like a frame, but it's a little too harsh. It's not soft. It's not a soft uh, transition between on and off. That's OK. It, at, at, uh, it's still going to be a little bit faster because it's not thinking about the points that are marked 0 on the weight map. So it's, we're still getting a speed boost. But we should improve the look of this. And let's, speaking of look, let me go to shaded solid. So I should try to improve it so it doesn't look quite like, uh, like you have silk. Glued yeah, to it, it a definitely frame. has that silk feel to it. Yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften that up a bit by using shape retention on the torso as well. So I'm going to use a weight map. Whoops. Do a gradient, weight map. So that same weight map that you used before to tell Bullet which points to pay attention to, yep. and you're going to use. If the value is zero or less, I'm going to tell it to use 100% to use, uh, shape retention. And, if, and uh, going into the regular weight map, I'm going to tell it, I'll tell it for now, well, maybe I'll make it keep 10% of its original shape, try to calm down the clothiness of this. Right. And, well, what part should it lock? How about everybody? Translation and rotation. So now, as the head advances through the scene, this should be a little gentler than what it was before. Although it's a, it, it does seem like it's a little tight and stretched. Not quite as, as loose as it might be. So there's, there's ways to do this further, because 
right now the linear stiffness is 100%, which is telling all of the points, it's trying to make them as reluctant as possible to move through space, to, to, to change their, their, uh, their relationship with each other. So I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna copy this weight map, copy, selected layer, go to the T button for this, paste, replace selected layer, and I'm gonna tell it if the weight value is 0%, Sure, make the linear stiffness 100 percent. Yeah, but if it's if it's 100 percent weight value, make it zero percent linear. Well, let's make it one percent linear stiffness. And let's try that again. This actually, it's like there's. Twice this year, I've had friends tell me, like, I need to have something horrible swimming around a, a guy's stomach because clients are asking for that. Last year, there was something similar that you could have used the same technique for, and that was, uh, it was an episode of Community where some, a head and some hands came out of a wall for a Halloween episode. So it looks like, and this, this is all TV shows, TV series, like the clients are too cheap these days to buy, for, uh, buy a sheet of latex and put it on a frame. So they're asking VFX artists to do it, so you gotta know how to do this stuff. So it's starting to, it's starting to get better. It's looking a little ripply. Uh, the, and also, here's another thing, is that the head seems to be sticking to this surface. Because I've left the friction at its default of 50%. Right, it's not sliding in underneath it, it's actually just, once it comes in contact, it's holding it there. So I'm gonna take the friction off the head, and I'm also gonna tell the torso geometry not to be so grabby. So this will make it more slidey. It'll definitely make it more slidey. So now with zero friction on both objects. So this should be a bit better yet. Although there's a couple of things that could be refined further. Notice that it's rippling like water. And that's cool, it looks cool, but it's That's not really the look that you're going for, is it? No, it's not. So let me do this to the torso. I'm going to tell it to tamp that down, put the dampening coefficient to 5% instead of 0. On the da torso. It's like, yeah, it's like shock absorbers. Damping coefficient is like shock absorbers for the dynamics. So this is going to absorb some of the, the ripples and just make it a little calmer. So it shouldn't be as ripply as it was before. And there's a further improvement that I could make to this yet. Yeah, notice that the geometry of the torso seems to be catching on the head. Yeah, I see the right around the eyes, kind of the, uh, the brow area. So I can, I can reduce that if I just increase the collision margin. If I give it a bigger collision force field, that should calm it down just a bit. So this is like adding a, just a little bit of a, an additional space over the face. Oh yeah, just uh, so that the polygons themselves aren't coming in direct contact, but like a, a shield around it. Yep. So this should be a little bit better. There's also one more refinement I'd like to make to this. Right now, it's not really conforming to the head as tightly as it could, because, and I, I think that's because of the angular stiffness. The angular stiffness is the flexibility of the material. So if I lower that to 1%. Now we're getting a tighter fit around that nose and the lips. Yeah, we're not getting that rippling either. So let's see what further tweaks I might be able to make to this. Let's take shape retention down to 0% for the weight map on the middle. This is more about experimentation. A bullet is very good about letting you experiment with your dynamics because it's so fast. So it's just uh, you get close, you have an idea, and then you just refine from there. And the speed of the of the simulation allows allows that experimentation. Oh yeah, uh, that made a big difference. So 
That's a little bit better. Let's see what more I can do here. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe let's see what happens. Whoops. So I'm just trying some variations. What I liked about the way my coworkers were using this tool was that for them it felt more like playing with the dynamics. Oh of yeah, I've, I've actually found that, uh, that the dynamics now in Lightwave, I, I almost, if I have a long phone call, I'll just kind of pull it up and just kind of play with it. I think that looks more appropriate. Yeah, that's really pretty good. Because what I had was I had the linear stiffness so low that the points felt a little too free to float around. But now that the linear stiffness is 10% minimum, it's not, it's not as crumply as it was before. It's a, it's a more rigid material. But the angular stiffness of 1% makes it incre incredibly flexible material. So maybe it's not free, maybe it doesn't feel free to move back and forth like it used to, but, but it is a very flexible material and you'll see that it's conforming nicely to that head. So. So this is kind of the kind of stuff that you can do with bullet. Very cool, very cool. So you can and then, if you wanted to, even refine it further. I mean, you you just kind of tweaked and went and went with this. This was one of these applications now where you could bake this uh, cache out. That's correct. And load it into our new tool, Chronosculpt, and even refine it further for just those last few tweaks, and it wouldn't have to spend any time. Dialing and dialing and re-simulating and re-simulating, you could just kind of go in there and and, uh, and polish it up. Yeah, like that actually came up. Let me increase the uh, display level. Just see, this is what happens after it's subdivided. When it's subdivided after the cage deformation, it just gives it a much more smooth and refined appearance. But yes, regarding Chronosculpt, what's funny is that the friend who I helped this out with this uh, sort of simulation work out with, he came up to me and he said, and he said, you know what? He said, we could have used Chronosculpt last month. Oh, absolutely. Because he said the, the client loved, absolutely loved the deformation work the, of the head coming through the torso, just like the client wanted. However, they said, oh, if you could just so, tweak it just So the director came here. up and, and said my favorite thing, looks great, except. Yes, like the thing about <laughs> dynamics that looks great, and as you can see here, is the randomness, the unpredictability. That's what people respond to when they see dynamics, when they see a flag flapping in the wind, when they see skin jog jostle. They really love the randomness of it. That's what sells you on the sense that it's a dynamic piece. But, but everyone wants to try to have that control over the chaos. Right. Chronosculpt is about going in and adjusting something specific, layering something specific on top of, in this case, something random. So you can use this to, to get like in the right place, but if the client asks you to do something incredibly specific, that's where you then break out the chronoscope. Break out chronoscope. So, so that's my demonstration of body horror with bullet. I hope you can use this to to uh, do horrible things to other male torsos and to also perhaps uh, for this Halloween have a head coming out of a wall. Surprise your <laughs> friends.